Cheers, welcome back. In this episode, we're gonna talk about reading some YAML data. We're gonna do like a tiny little conversion of a time from a string time with, uh, you know, hours, minutes, seconds, and then we're gonna write back as just a seconds integer. So it'll be just sort of a little bit of a reading files and writing files with YAML and then a bit of time conversion. So what I wanted to do here, I have this uh, videos.yaml file that has a, a YAML structure that lists out a bunch of video objects where we have an ID and we have some preferences. We have a YouTube ID and a title description and we have this duration. And right now this duration is stored as a minutes colon seconds and it might even be like hours, minutes, seconds. And what I want to do is convert this duration into just an integer value for the second. So for uh, um, eight minutes, 50 seconds, this should be like duration is equal to like eight times 60 plus 50 or something like that, right? So what is this? This is like eight times 60. So 480 uh, plus 50. So that sh the answer here should just be like 530 because we just want the total seconds um, as an integer value. And so what we're gonna do today is read in this file with Ruby, uh, change the durations into integer values in seconds and then write it back out uh, with Ruby also. So the first thing I wanna do here is uh, open up a new thing called like video durations.rb. This will be just like a simple file all right, so what we're gonna do is first we're gonna start by requiring YAML, require YAML, and then we're gonna call yaml.load file. And we're gonna pass it that, uh, that local file uh, videos.yaml. And this should just give us the, the videos as, as YAML. So let's run this Ruby video durations and we'll see what that gives back. Okay, so this is gonna be like a Ruby, uh, a Ruby object where we're, we now can use it as if it were a hash. Um, and so we need to like go through each of these videos and then we're gonna write it back as YAML. So this is gonna be our videos. And uh, so what we wanna do now is we wanna like loop over the videos, or this is kind of like this like raw data um, because the key videos, like at the top level we have a videos key. So it's gonna be like data at videos dot each do video and then we can print out the video. And we'll run that again. Um, okay, so this is this is each of the individual videos. And then I think the duration, yeah, so the duration should be a key that's at the video level. So I think we might be able to even say duration here. And that should give us just the two durations, perfect. Okay, so now we're seeing the two durations spit out. And now what we wanna do is maybe like, let's say like convert or like duration duration to seconds or something like that. Um, we can write a little method down here. Duration to seconds. It's gonna take like in a, the string the string duration. And then it want, we want this to return an integer value. Um, okay, so then the other thing that I would probably wanna do here is uh, yeah, so let's, this should be fairly straightforward. We, need, we want to split on colon. Um, so this is gonna be our components where we're gonna have like, um, like maybe we call this like the parts and we're gonna say duration dot split on colon. And that should take the string value that has like colons in it. So this should take like, um, if we get like 0, 8, 50, and when we split, we're gonna get the string 0, 8, and then the string 50 as two separate components. Um, and those are gonna be our parts. Uh, so then we can probably like map those uh, to i. So we can say um, dot map and pass it a block here. That's like a part, and we can say part dot to i, right? Cause this is the, the return value or the implicit return value from the block is what will be returned. And so like after we do that, then we should get back just the integer values for eight and 50. Okay, but this is, so um, this pattern with using map is so common where you can pass a block and then you're calling a method on an element that is passed to the block. This is so common that there's actually a shortcut here where we can, instead of passing the block at all, instead we can execute map and pass in two i just like this with the ampersand in front um, and this will operate as if we're calling or 
as if we're passing sort of a block where 2i is going to be pulled off of the element and executed just the same way that we had with the block method. Um, let's also just print out parts down here. And then I think in order to run this, we need it to be um, before we actually call it, we have to define the function. So let's run this and take a look. OK, so now we get back 8 and 50. So that's cool. And we're also getting 28 and 39. So now the trick becomes um, what we need to do is uh, um, we need to multiply the first component by 60 to give us 60 seconds, right? Because the first component is going to be in minutes. And then we need to add it to the second component. But in order to do this so that it works with both minutes and hours, like so if we had 0, 1, like if it was 1 hour, 8 minutes and 50 seconds, then it's going to be a little trickier. Or in the case where we started off with, even I guess in the case where we start off with 0, if it was like just 50 seconds long, that would still work because we're splitting on colon and the first element would be 0. So I think we're going to need two cases where we have either two components or three components. So I think what we want to do is like the simple way that we could do this is say um, if parts dot count is equal to two, then we could return. Uh, yeah, we could return parts dot first times 60 uh, plus parts dot last. OK, uh, L else if parts.count is equal to three, um, then we want to do parts.first times 60 times 60. Or yeah, we'll just keep it simple and clear to, to start with. And then, so that's going to be our hour plus, and then our minute is going to be parts uh, at one times 60. And then we have our parts.last. So that should give us another option for working with the three component times timestamp. Um, and then else we want to like raise an exception or like, yeah, raise uh, invalid duration. Um, maybe we even pass in the duration so that we can take a look at what it was. OK, so we can run this and we should be getting back we should be getting back that integer. So let's print that out. OK, 530 and 17. All right, and then the next thing we want to do is we actually want to update the video duration to be that new duration. So video duration is equal to this new thing. And then we can p data again, and we should see like the updated videos with their new durations. So now the duration is 530. That's the right, in, that's the right seconds. Um, and then also down here, the second one duration is 1719. While, while we're going through this, why don't we also p out video uh, duration before and after, just so that we can like double check and make sure. So 850 is turning into 530, 2839 is turning into 1719. So let's do that one also. So is to edit this so that we have one that's like one hour and eight minutes and 50 seconds. And then if we run this again, we get back uh, 4,130. So let's check and make sure that's right. 4,130, that's right. OK. And then let's, let's also clean this up a bit. I think we can make this a little bit better um, so that uh, I think we can reverse the parts so that we start with minutes and then we can iterate over those and every for each uh, every time that we go through we can multiply by one more um, multiple of 60 I think so then we can probably do something like this so we have um, we're going to split on colon then we're going to reverse and then we want to like map uh, with index um, do uh, part and I and then in here, we'll put our put our logic that we want to, to print out. So we want to print out like um, i times 60. Or, OK, so in this case, 60 times 60 is not 2 times 60, right? This is 60 squared. So it's actually like 60 uh, to the i, right? I think this will work. So like component or like. Um, 
let's print let's just print that out for now and see what we get uh, as we're iterating okay wait why is this uh, undefined method map with index I thought this was a in okay is this not a enumerable map with index I thought we could map with index is it dot map dot with index or something? Um, each with index dot map. Huh. Oh, here we go. Map. Okay, so it's map dot with index. Okay, so let's see if this works. All right, so we see 60, 61, 62. So this this is not actually raising it to the exponents. Uh, is it is it star star? There we go. Okay, so the first one, we're going to get one second one we get 60 the last one we get 360. so that's going to be the the the, um, the number of times that we want to multiply our component by right so now we're going to get part times that and we should get back the right number i believe and i think this is actually what we want to oh no and then we want to like sum those up so if we p parts now we should see like each of the different pieces here so we're, we're getting one hour plus uh, eight minutes, which I think is, that's right, right? So eight times 60, yep, is 480, and then 50 seconds, and we wanna add all of these up, and that should give us our answer. So now we can say like, um, uh, let's see, dot inject, and with inject, we can pass it an accumulator, right? So that's like our, or our, uh, our, in, our um, like a seed value or initial value, and we can say do, accumulator and the uh, the part and now we're going to say like ACC plus part so this is another case here that is super common right that, that when you're working with uh, with arrays and inject where you're going to pass some seed value and then you want to do some operation uh, with on the accumulator and the part or on the accumulator and the element and so this one also has a shortcut where I believe we can put pass like symbol and plus and that will sum up the results. So now if we run it, we get back our correct numbers here. Um, but there might even just be like dot sum. So let's see if that is a thing. Okay, so there is dot sum. That's like a quicker and easier version. And then that's actually what we want to return is that result there. So that is uh, just a little bit cleaner. So we're taking the duration. We're splitting on the colon. Okay, and then we're mapping that into integers. So that's going to give us these integer values. Then we're reversing it so that the minute comes first, or so that the second comes first, then the minute, then the hour. And the reason that we're doing that is so that when we map over that list with index, then we're gonna get the part. So the very first one is gonna be the second, and i is gonna be equal to zero. And when we say 60 raised to the zero, that, that's gonna return one, because anything raised to the zero element, you get back one. And so then we're going to say one times the part. So one times the number of seconds. In this case, one times 50 is 50. So that's going to be the result there. Then when we go look at the second component, so I guess like maybe it makes sense to, uh, yeah, let's, let's uh, break this down here like this. So that's like the starting point. And then after split, we get this. And then after map, we get this. And then after reverse, we get this, 50 comma eight. And then after map with index times I, now we're gonna get 50 and then we're gonna get eight times uh, 60. And then uh, sum, we're gonna get whatever this is, 480 plus, was it 480 plus 50, it's 530. So that's kind of like the whole the steps as we go through the process, given that input. Um, so hopefully this makes sense. But the, the reason that we wanted to do this this magic here is that now we can support like several different uh, like versions of the the time string that's separated by colons. So this should this should work, I think. Um, the one thing that was a little bit nicer about the previous iteration is that if we had some time component where it was like something like um, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, right? Like this doesn't really make sense unless we're talking about milliseconds or something. Um, so it would be like one hour, two minutes, three seconds, and four milliseconds. We don't really, 
want to support that. Furthermore, we don't want to support something like this, right? Uh, like maybe someone passes a MAC address or something crazy. Um, right now, our duration two seconds will totally just figure out what the sum is given this input, but we don't really want to um, to handle that uh, that amount of input. So instead of like messing around with this, one thing we could do is just check to see like how many times a colon appears or something, but I'm pretty confident in the input data and I don't want to fuss with it too much. So this is kind of where I'm going to leave it at. Um, and I'm gonna remove these comments because it is hard to read, but that's kind of the idea. Um, all right, so the next step here is that we actually want to write this YAML back to the YAML file or back to a new YAML file. So rather than overriding our existing YAML file, I always wanna work with a new one so that I don't actually like, or accidentally blow away my input data. So I'm gonna say something like, um, let's print out data.toYAML and just see what this looks like. And we'll remove these two. So now if we run it, uh, so that, let's see, data.toYAML. Okay, let's do puts so that it comes out a little cleaner. All right, so yeah, this is uh, exactly what we want. So we have videos, it has an ID, and then we have our duration as an integer, our next duration as an integer. So we wanna write this to a file. So we can say um, file.open um, w do f f dot puts and we also need to give it a file name. So we're going to open um, dot slash videos with duration dot yaml and we can always like rename it later and overwrite our existing yaml file or something like that. Um, but let's just give this a whirl and see if this works. And now if we cat videos with duration.yaml, this is our new file. Now the thing that's a little weird in terms of the formatting is these are not indented anymore, but I think that totally should be, that should be fine. Um, so that is how I would go about sort of taking that input file, changing the duration from a string into an integer. Um, value of seconds and then spitting it back out to YAML. Hopefully this is useful or interesting. And uh, as always, appreciate your time and attention and we'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.